Okay, so welcome everyone to the reusable identities track for the DIF hackathon. Uh, we are super excited to be here. I'm Alberto, I'm a software engineer at Crossmain working on the main platform. And maybe Valerio, you want to introduce yourself first? Sure, I am Valerio and I work here at Crossmain on the credentials product. Perfect. <laughs> so yeah, maybe let's start let's start talking about how we why we decided to sponsor this track and this challenge for the DIF hackathon and the reason here is that we think the decentralized this decentralized technologies meet all the requirements we need for a good uh, digital identity decentralized digital identity system and we think that it will be used in the future and some of these criteria that we think a good identity, digital identity system should have is have a model of ownership. And, and we know that blockchains and decentralized solutions provide with that. So you can own your own assets and you don't need to rely you know, on big companies or centralized institutions to hold your identity and your assets. And we also believe on a standardized solution for identity so that will enable uh, interoperability between different companies and different institutions so everyone can validate and can have a proof or of your identity and it's publicly accessible by anyone but the problem here is that the user experience for non-web3 native users into this kind of technology has been a challenge so far and that's where crossmin comes into the picture because we've been for some years trying to make these technologies accessible to the general public. We say our mission is bringing the world on chain, meaning that everyone can use these technologies even if they don't have uh, deep knowledge on how these technologies are actually working under the hood. So over the last, past, over the last few years, we've built been building a couple of products, one of them being the minting platform in which any user can mint crypto assets, mint crypto assets, NFTs, SFTs, subscriptions, and so on with minimal knowledge without having to maintain liquidity or maintaining private keys for the wallets. We are also building a product for wallets, for abstracted wallets, so users don't even need to know that they are using a crypto wallet at all because we maintain everything on our side using Fireblocks for NPC secure wallets. So that's basically these private keys that are unleakable and also using account abstraction, which is a super promising technology that we think everyone will be using in a couple of years. And also a payments product for cross chain payments and also credit card payments. So you could buy uh, NFTs, both from primary and secondary markets. And you could use any cross-chain liquidity path, like you could buy a base NFT with Sol or an Ethereum NFT with USDC, for example. So let's dive into some of these products because this is very interesting because our verifiable credential solution will use all of these products and particularly minting and wallets. So let's see how this is actually working. And for that, let's start with an example. If I'm a non-Web3 native user and I want to mint an NFT or a crypto asset in general, the access to that technology is super hard because I need to first learn how to deploy those NFT contracts on chain or if it's Solana or Aptos interacting with their NFT contracts. And I need to maintain private keys and to hold these uh, uh, private keys on my side, holding those wallets, and also holding liquidity to a sponsor for these transactions. And this is actually the, the easy part because then you need to prevent everything from exploding, like known conflicts or and many of these reliability issues that we may have when interacting with blockchain technologies. So we try to simplify this process as much as possible. And now using Crossing, you can just create a crypto asset with a call, an HTTP call, 
to an API that we provide, and you just need to specify the metadata you want for your asset, the kind of asset, and the recipient. And we can mint it to an external wallet, we can mint it to an external email, that meaning that we will handle this wallet, we will create a wallet for you to hold your crypto asset, and we will, and this will be super easy to use even for general for the general public. So when you do that, this call to the API, what is actually happening here, we are taking care of everything. We are deploying a security audited contract on chain that you can use to mint assets in many supported chains, both EVM, Solana, Aptos, Cardano, a lot of them. And we are managing concurrency, which we know is one of the bottlenecks for blockchain interaction because you need to maintain the order of this transaction and that's sometimes hard if you don't have a good a good infrastructure uh, backing you. And this other product we wanted to talk about is wallets. As we mentioned, we have different kind of wallets that we support for in Crossmin, one of them being the what we call the custodial wallets, uh, which is five blocks back and uh, wallets, and also account abstraction that we released recently. And for that, we do not hold any information about your wallet. Uh, you have full control and you can use many access control like, like your Google account, like pass keys. And for these two kind of wallets, you would be able to sign transactions, send transactions and perform every other operation that you would perform with a regular wallet that you maintain with, your, with the private key. And from here, I think uh, Valeria will hand over to you. So maybe you can dive down on the yeah. on the verifiable credential product. Sure. Do you want to share? Share my screen so it's Perfect. easier. Um, okay. Do you see? Yeah. Okay, so this Akatan is about reusable identities, and so let's talk about um, uh, one of our products that we think is a very strong instrument in securing a digital identity online, and this is very power credentials. Our product is based on the W3C standard, and uh, for example, here we are showing a very power credential from the W3C standard uh, obtained with our infrastructure. In this case, we can see that the credential is just a payload that contains some fields like the credential subject. In this case, what did the sub what are we certifying that they completed the blockchain course with Rada and the identity? In this case, uh, the ID, a wallet of a user that is the one having the to which the credential is issued. We have a expire date. We have a for example in, for our implementation, we have a reference to NFT that we will talk about late, later. And then very important, we have the issuer identity, so the entity that we are trusting with issuing this uh, credential. And then there is the proof object that in this case is omitted for simplicity, but is where we keep all the signature and all the data about the schema that we're using to for this credential. Uh, when I talk about credentials, there are three main parts, three main entities, the issuer, so the entity that issues the certificate, for example, could be a university, and this user, the issuer can just use our APIs to do that. The user that is kind of a passive uh, entity, they just receive their uh, the credential to their wallet, but they're an active entity in the sense that they then need to present their credential to a verifier, which is what is their verifier, any third party that wants to verify a pro uh, property about a user, and the user can present their credential to them. Uh, working with the credential is not that easy. Like uh, you need to first decide how you want to sign and you need to use a cryptography secure um, signature method. Then you need to decide what you want to support from the W3C standard. That is a very vague standard, the one for VCs. So you need to decide which are the features that you want to support or not and uh, move in that direction. Then you need a way to store and distribute and uh, retrieve this credential that are, is not specified by the standard. You need to maintain a revocation server to know which uh, credential have been revoked. And then you need an SDK for the verifier. You need to uh, deploy all this on-chain if you want to have on-chain verified credentials. And then you need also to provide encryption and authentication for the user. So all of this is very complicated. With Crossmint, it's just an API call. Um, so for example, in this case, we can see that Issuing a VC is just calling our APIs with uh, a user. And as we said, we can also 
create wallets for users. So you can just provide the email of the user and with the payload that you want to simplify about the user. Uh, what's happening under the hood is that uh, we create a wallet for them. Uh, we issue and um, sign the credential with the uh, from the issuer and then encrypt it if it's an encrypted verifiable credential. Uh, then we mint an NFT that will be linked to this credential. There is the two entities, the NFT that lives on chain and the credential that we upload to any storage solution of your desire. So maybe IPFS or also a proprietary storage or CrossMint if you want to go with a very fast route. And then we can also, as we said, encrypt and manage encryption or use a third party encryption system like Lift Protocol. And then at the end, the reference ends up in the user's wallet and they can retrieve it from there. Uh, to revoke it is as easy as issuing it. You call our APIs and under the hood, what we do is burn the NFT. And when you burn the NFT, the credential becomes invalid. Um, and it is what we're doing. We are just burning the NFTs under the hood. Uh, from the verifier side, we provide an SDK that given a user's wallet, it automatically does everything for you. Uh, and then you can also decrypt uh, the, the credential if it's encrypted. So the user will be prompted to sign a message uh, with their wallet because the credential is encrypted and only the users can decrypt it. Uh, and once they sign the message, you will be able to verify the um, credential with using our APIs or our SDK. And under the hood, what we do is retrieve all the VCs for the users uh, from their wallet and then retrieve all the metadata for those. and once the user gives permission, so signs a message, the credential is decrypted and you can use our uh, SDK to verify it. We offer a var variety of uh, custom solutions. So for example, where this credential will live on IPFS to go for the most decentralized um, solution or also on CrossMint if you want the easy one and the fastest one, or you can, if it's a sensitive, sensible application, you can also store the data on your own database. And for encryption, we can use Lift protocol. That is a super new encryption protocol that allows you to use the user's wallet as the only way to decrypt the um, credentials. Or also CrossMint, we gate uh, the credential based on the a signature from the user. Uh, uh, a small digression for credential one important is our types. So what is the scheme of your, of your credential and the thing why is it important is important because this way you know that no one added or removed fields from the credential that you're expecting. And we also manage all of this from you. You can just use our APIs to create a schema with your desired uh, properties and we will create for you. And uh, a very cool thing is that right now we are working for, with DIF to on the um, uh, official credential schema repositories that you can find here is still a work in progress, but you can start adding your own schemas to this official repo and then people can reuse it. And very soon they will be, when you create a schema with CrossMint, it will be automatically upload, uploaded to the official DIF schema repository. Uh, we, have a, we have a few demos. Let's go over them very quickly. So uh, first one is about the Shibetoshi University. Uh, this is a demo about how you can use virtual credentials for education. All of that, this stuff is linked in our documentation. But for example, here I load this website. Uh, I have already logged in with a test wallet. And in this case, um, um, wait. Okay, not sure. I'm not sure if this is the right one. Okay. We should be good, not sure what was going on.
Okay, okay. I'm not sure why it was not loading. So here we are. We already have a um, credential for this uh, wallet. Probably the reason why it was not loading is this is running in staging, so everything is a bit slow. But we already have a credential for this user. Otherwise, we could create it, um, student ID. And for example, we can click on it, see that this is my student ID and that it will expire uh, uh, next month. Uh, no, actually in 10 years. And we can, what's happening here is that our SDK is retrieving all my credentials and showing me the one that are student IDs. And then I can verify it. And under the hood, we are checking that the proof is valid and that is being issued by the Shibetoshi University. And then we can go to courses. And for example, I already completed the Blockchain 101 course, but let, I can take another one. I can take a Wallace course. And for example, which of the following is not a type of Web3 wallet? Probably is carbon fiber. And so we can click on it. And uh, what's going on here is that we are issuing a credential for the Wallace 102 course that was available for issuing only because we already completed Blockchain 101. Um, Yeah, it's not super fast. Okay, now we can see that this pending is gonna take probably a 30 seconds or so because we are actually in the on chain and we are in staging. And so let's wait a bit. Uh, and as you can see, we have all of these other courses are not available yet because the system doesn't uh, recognize that uh, credential. And Let's see if it's done. Okay, as we can see, the credential has been minted. And so now we can see that I can take the next one. And if I go to my profile, I can see all these credentials. And uh, for example, for the Shibetoshi uh, student ID, we see that it's a public credential, so we can already see it, and everyone on chain can see it. But for example, for the blockchain 101, this is an encrypted credential, so no one can see what's inside unless me, the user, actually uh, sign a message. Not sure if the MetaMask uh, pop up, it, it will be shown in the screen sharing, but what happened is MetaMask prompted me to sign a message, and what I'm doing is accepting it. So. What happens is that since I accepted the credential has been decrypted, and now that it's decrypted, I can verify it, and it's marked as verified. So this was it for the Shibetoshi University. Uh, we can go very quickly to our other two demos. For example, this is a way to use credentials to authenticate to a GPT. It's to show that we can use credentials to as proof of humanity, but also to for different agents to interact with each other. For so, for example, in this case, uh, I can do. It. Let's start this uh, the verification GPT. That will take a bit. And then I can ask him to give me the secret. OK, now it's been initialized. If I ask him to give me the secret, he's going to hopefully say that I cannot. OK. Uh, no, he, he, the sick is not going to give it to me because I'm not authenticated. So what I can do is provide uh, a credential. Uh, I'm just uploading the credential file and uh, tell him to authenticate with this credential. And what he's going to do is uh, actually not calling any external service, but running the verification locally and checking that the credential is valid. And your credential is valid. And so we found out that the secret is by. Um, there is another very easy demo. This one was to show up that we can get a GPT with a credential. This other one is to play around. We can, for example, ask uh, the GPT to issue a credential and it will automatically use uh, the CrossMeet APIs to issue a credential for me. So I can say issue a credential to Valerio at crossmeet.com. And what's going to happen is that it's going to call our APIs and issue a credential. 
and then once the credential has been issued, it's gonna take also here 30 seconds or so. I can retrieve it and then use it to authenticate. It's gonna probably not be ready now, but it's gonna take a while. Anyway, this was our demos. You can find all of them in our documentation. I'm gonna give back the speech to Alberto that is gonna wrap up. Okay, so thank you, Valerio. I'll share my screen now. So here it is. Okay, so now let's talk about the actual hackathon challenge that we are proposing here. The main topic we have thought about is about creating robust and secure identity solutions that can be reused across platforms. These are the desirable characteristics for a digital identity um, system that we were discussing before. And basically we want to foster the inter interoperability between different, mm, different verifiers and different companies and institutions. We have proposed a couple of examples that we know the market is demanding as KYC and KYB. These academic records credential could be also a use case and also things like age verification, which is quite linked to the use cases for zero, zero knowledge proofs. And But feel free to explore, feel free to push the boundaries of the technology. We will be super excited to see your, your solutions. And of course, there are prices. There are a part of the, of each price is just cash that we will you your team will get. And the third part is cross main subscription credits, which is basically credits for you to interact with cross main infrastructure for free. So you can create wallets, you can create collection, mint NFTs, and so on. And I can guarantee like five hundred dollars in cross main subscri subscription credits is a lot, so you can play for days and weeks, and uh, so you can explore all of our suite of products. And last, there are not many requirements for the submission. Basically, you need to use the Verify of Ball Credentials product that Barry was showing, and then you need to record a three minute video and submit your code to any public repository that we can retrieve that from. And that's it. We are super excited to, to see all these solutions. And if you have any question, feel free to reach out either on Discord or in our personal emails. We'll be glad to, to help in whatever we, we can. And if you need API reference or documentation about this verifiable credential product or any other product that you actually uh, want to use in your solution, just we are providing this link to the Chrome documentation. If anything is not clear, please reach out and we, we will try to help. And that was all from our side. Uh, thank you guys for watching and for being interested on the new digital identity era. Thanks everyone. Awesome, thank you so much. And I dropped in the chat the links to register, um, I think, um, I do see one new person here. Um, so yeah, uh, that's all gonna be there and then we'll have the video up very soon, probably within the hour in the Hackathon Discord. And it also there's a cross mint channel there. So if anybody wants to follow up with more questions, they can go there and ask questions. That's perfect. All right. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm really excited about your challenge um, and um, definitely reach out if you guys have any questions. Perfect. Oh. Bye bye. Yeah. No All right. See you. Bye. bye, everyone. All right. Thanks.